All right, what I got here is a sump for a Whirlpool dishwasher. It's a global wash dishwasher system. And what I'm gonna show you here is, what I found when I, when I diagnosed the dishwasher is that 120 volts was coming out of the control board. Used my low Z to confirm it was good voltage, and it was. So I knew that the, uh, the motor was defective, and the price of the motor is pretty much the price of the sump, so I just replaced the whole sump. Um, it's easier that way, and it costs the same, so why not? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this pump and see uh, why uh, it's defective. Now, you see here, there's two pins, right? And here, I'll show you the tag also. 120 volts and 900 milliamps. So, um, if it's mechanically stalled, then you'd hear a hum, but you don't hear a hum, you just hear nothing. And uh, when you ohm it out, you just get a, an open, open circuit. And you get six, seven mega ohms. Okay, so I'm gonna open this puppy up and see what's going on inside. Okay, I'll let you take a look at that. This is actually, this board is what's, what's failing. And just to show you here, I'm going to put my meter, ohm out this winding. I haven't done this yet, but I, I, um, on this one, but I've done it before, so I know what I'm going to find. See, we got a, a good resistance on the motor. And if I take this apart, this is actually going to look a lot like your standard drain pump motor. All right, so I managed to get a, a drain pump over one that I hadn't uh, destroyed from my previous project. And that was for the uh, transformer, uh, drain pump to transformer video. Anyways, so I got a a few of these but anyways uh, so this guy right here you got those contacts this one obviously is busted because of me taking it apart but you can see how they're gonna look this the same so inside here you have this same coil so basically it's a, the same as a drain pump um, for a washer. So I'm going to go ahead and test out this board and see if I can't find what on this board has failed. We do have a chip on here, which has got to be your uh, 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 PWM output uh, for the motor. So basically it will rectify the AC voltage to DC on this board and then a sec. So uh, on this board what's going on is we have uh, the AC being rectified to DC. Um, here we have a chip and that's going to be the um, PWM chip. It's it's probably going to be similar to a 555 timer. And here on the end, you're going to have a, a, a hole sensor. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to check to see if I can't find any of these parts that are defective. Uh, and um, if not, then the chip is going to be what's failed on it. So here you have a thermistor. I'm going to camera down here so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna put my probes on the thermistor. You can see it's 627 ohms. I 
take a little free spray to it. It's, it's changed its value. So, a thermistor must be for uh, overheating, uh, overheat sensor uh, for the board. The actual motor should have a overheat limiter as well inside here, just like this one. See, this guy has, that's going to be your thermal fuse here. So I tested the uh, components I could, the resistors, the diode, uh, thermistor. Unfortunately, um, traces, you can't see the traces on the board, which is a, a real pain because uh, that would be nice to be able to see what goes to what, but they decided not to do that. So I test, there's a Zener diode where it says DZ, I tested that, I was checking out K. So, Really, my conclusion is uh, just probably have a bad chip here because um, I'm not seeing anything else. So, if you have any questions, uh, comments, uh, yeah, post them down below, and uh, we'll see you next time.